to get started on the video, we're going to start right here. So as you guys know, I use the Camco water filters because I have excessively high chlorine in New York. So these things really knock it down. And I have a Gilmore little splitter hooked up right here. So that pretty much enables me to use one portion of the feed with this little knob right here. I could turn it on and off whether I want to use the garden hose to fill buckets or the foam cannon, or I want to use the pressure washer to go through my full washes. Everything's got, you know, con everything's connected. I got quick connects down here and the garden hose is connected right here because I only have a single spigot. Now, this is a rapid reel. This is made in America, all aluminum. This is one of the best hose reels you're going to get. I also have a hundred foot continental garden hose courtesy of the Asseps Garage website also have the ultimate fireman's garden hose uh, nozzle so if you guys watched my last video i did a little bit of a shootout this one definitely wins and this one is definitely the best value and that's why it's on my garden hose right now so we're going to move right along to the rest of the stuff okay so after the garden hose now the most important part of the wash systems that i use is my 230 volt northern electric pressure washer you can see that there this has over a hundred feet of hose. I actually have the Cobra Jet from MTM on there and I adapted it and you can see here, I have a little bit of a quick disconnect when I want to get to the other side of my property and do stuff in the backyard. I made this little custom holder here. This is to keep the cord at check. Everything's all screwed in. Everything's all stainless steel. Uh, down here, I keep my foamers. So we got the small auto fanatic 5.0 foamer with my custom wand and gun. I got an old IK9. I got the IK Inox. I got the F100 custom foamer. Those are down there. That's what I use just for wheel cleaning. Now, I have a series of hooks. You can see this here. I got this, I think, at Lowe's. And I have a bunch of hooks. And so what I do here, I have my MTM SG28 with the Mosmatic wand. You can see it. I got the MTM uh, Aqualine 40-degree uh, nozzle at the tip. I pull this off. I'll just show you guys real quick what we're working with. So over here, these are wheel cleaning brushes. These are all natural bores here. I have a soft one and I have a little bit of a wider one. I use these on some cars. I don't use them that often. I also keep my tire scrubbing brush, but I don't use this that much. I think it's just easier for me to just do a mineral spirits wipe. Now up here, I showed you guys videos in the past in the channel on how I use these broom storage organizers for my detailing equipment. So just to show you guys here, I have the work stuff detailing brushes with different densities. Uh, I use these for wheels, brake calipers, interior cleaning, parts cleaning, whatever you know I need to do, I have there. These are, of course, the custom Auto Fanatic wheel cleaning brushes. So these are the ones where I you know, add the weighted handles, I extend them. I also have the telescoping one here. I have the miniature one there as well with the angle and the bent lance. Now back here, I did a video on this probably about two and a half years ago on the channel. These are the aluminum storage cabinets. Uh, they're not storage cabinets, they're storage like compartments that these are very popular if you have a portable trailer where you're going to transport your car to the track or whatever you want to keep oil and stuff like that so i bought two of them you can see i got one there and i got one here these are all bolted to the studs on the wall and then over here i have two additional ones so i have a double layer storage so you can see i have this stuff here because this is easily accessible so we're going to go start from left to right first order of business. This is the Sure Shot Sprayer. If you guys haven't seen this on my channel, I did a video a few years ago on it. So you could put any product of choice. This has a spun aluminum canister and then you charge it right there with your air compressor. So this is great to do parts cleaning or anything like restoration work on a vintage car or you want to do a pre-rinse and a pre-wash using like any of those rinseless washes for winter time. This is really great for that. So I leave that up here because I do use it regularly. Now, we got the foam cannons. Everybody loves foam cannons. This is the Griot's Garage Brilliant Finish Foam Cannon. This is pretty much my foam cannon of choice. I only use this foam cannon now. Everything else was given away to fans, and this is all I use to wash the cars. Right next to it, I have my original MTM PF22. This one is only used for the Auto Fanatic wheel cleaning foam. So what we do here, we fill that up with water. We add a couple ounces of the Auto Fanatic wheel cleaning concentrate and shake it up and then I foam off all, all four wheels. Now, the great thing about using the foam cannon, and I discussed this in videos in the past, is that I don't like to pre-rinse my wheels. I like to get the jet stream of the soap and, and the foam cannon to do the pre-rinse for me. So what you, pretty much you're gonna zap the wheels at high PSI, you're gonna get the foam, you're gonna get the wheel cleaning foam on there, and it's gonna break up the brake dust and really give you a good head start as far as getting your wheels clean. So 
We're going over here. Now we have two more Griot's Garage foam cannons. So this is an additional brilliant finish foam cannon. And like I said, I'll use that with different mixtures of soaps and some other new products that I'll be testing. I use that independently. Or sometimes I'll do different dilution ratios. But I have two of these up in my workstation right now. Right next to it, this is the Griot's Garage Boss Foam Cannon. I don't use it that much, I'm gonna be honest with you. Ever since this one came out, this one really tops the cake and it just makes my life easier. This one is very well built. It doesn't give the foam density that this one does, but this is definitely the pinnacle with all the stainless steel construction and just the barrel and everything is just really, really nice. So as you can see, I have old gallons of Griot's Garage the polygloss and of course their foaming surface wash and you can see they're i don't use this stuff anymore i'm just using pretty much to do all my washes the new auto fanatic 007 snowstorm version 2.0 blows the stuff away and like i said i hate to you know do anything with this stuff and throw it away but i just leave it up there maybe you know i'll get a card that i'm working on or if one day i'll just might want to use the fragrance of cherries or coconut which makes you feel like you're on the beach this actually stuff is very pleasant to use in the summertime but I leave it on the shelf because I may get into a mood one day where I'll just say, hey, you know what, I feel like using that. And uh, I'll just throw it in the foam cannon and go to work. So going left to right, we got Auto Fanatic 007 Snowstorm version 2.0. If you guys have used this soap, this is incredible, absolutely incredible product. Original version of Auto Fanatic Hull Shot. This is the SiO2 based tire and trim dressing. Over here we have Auto Fanatic Professional Wheel Cleaning Foam Mega Concentrate. So this 16 ounce bottle, can last you a while and make multiple gallons, whether you're gonna use it in a foam cannon, like the way I'm using it, or in the pump-up foamers that I have down below. Auto Fanatic Secret Weapon. If you guys have been using this, uh, professional detailers, mobile detailers, whatever, this product is incredible. Currently unavailable. We're working on an updated formula for this, so stay tuned, don't feel bad. This stuff is definitely gonna be coming out on the market very soon, but this product has about hundreds and hundreds of uses from a single step polish, decontamination, cleaning wheels, uh, you name it, this product is incredible. Especially if you um, use your car daily and you get bumps and bruises and scrapes, no matter where you go, this stuff will take paint transfer off and it leaves a protective shine as well. Now, we got a new product here. This is a new interior detailer that we're working on. This doesn't have a label yet, no name. We're still in development, but I'm using it regularly. So this is a new interior detailer. We have Auto Fanatic 007 Gloss Enhancer Ceramic. This is our new updated version with SiO2 chemistry of the original, which is right here, the original 007 Gloss Enhancer Spray Detailer. Now, right here, this is a new version of an Auto Fanatic Waterless Wash. Just use an old bottle of Hydro Gloss just to get it up on the shelf, but this product is also still in development. I have an original bottle of the limited edition Auto Fanatic Hydro Gloss. Now, now this product, when we introduced it, this was the foundation. We did this as a new limited run after the nonsense we went through in 2020. I wanted to you know, introduce a new product and do something a little bit different. We did a special label on this. We did a limited run and everybody loved it so much that we took this formula and we transitioned into this formula. Okay, because everybody seemed to like the fragrance and everything about this and they also like this and then we kind of morphed it into this product here and this is actually one of our number one sellers. Now going across here, this is the new Auto Fanatic whole shot mega gloss so you guys watched my video i did a couple of weeks ago this is the mega gloss version whereas the original version will give you a nice satin finish but if you could do stack multiple coats you will get a high gloss finish but this actually takes a gloss level to a whole new level altogether right next to that we have just a refill of some original auto fanatic 007 gloss enhancer i still use that on occasion uh, just to get rid of it right next to it here we have Gion prep i buy this by the gallons and then I just keep refilling these smaller bottles. I use this stuff for everything whenever I'm doing paint correction, I'm gonna do a ceramic coating on a customer's wheels, whatever, this stuff is great. And I actually like it a lot and I use it a lot. So over here, we got some Sonax products. We have the Sonax Leather Cleaner and the Sonax Alcantara Cleaner. So this is a great product. A lot of people contact me. They say, Phil, how do I clean the Alcantara steering wheels? This is pretty much what I use. And I may do a, a simple short, you know, three minute video one day to show you guys my method. But you just spray some of this foam on a cheap microfiber towel and you just go along the rim and you, you just take a little brush and you clean it up and it's good to go. Uh, you guys saw a video I did on the GT350R, CarPro Essence Plus. This is a pretty interesting product. It's a, it's a ceramic coating repair. Uh, and also I consider it a, a pretty much like a hybrid sealant. Pretty cool stuff. This is another product we're working on. Not discussing this, this is still under development. This is another product we're working on. 
still under development as well. This is some Rapid Tack. This is used, if you guys watched my video when I did the, uh, the stripe replacement, and there's gonna be a new video on the Shelby stripes. This is a product that I learned to use that makes the stripes and vinyl go a hell of a lot easier. Now, over here we have some Malco Red Thunder all-purpose cleaner. I have my Autofanatic pumps with the caps on there, so I just pump a few ounces of this into a bottle and I kind of do my dilutions you know, accordingly. Over here we have, this is the salt off for the winter washes. Greer's Garage Citrus Multi-Purpose Cleaner. This stuff works really well on a lot of surfaces. I actually use it in the garage mostly to clean the stainless steel countertops on all my toolboxes and workstations. So this stuff works well, smells really good, and uh, it doesn't actually dry out your skin and hands like most all-purpose cleaners. Right here, we have a gallon of odorless mineral spirits. You can pick this up at Home Depot or Lowe's. This is what I use to clean all the sidewalls of the tires before prep and when I'm doing a full detail. This right here is automotive grade wax and grease remover, also known as Prepsol. I use the same thing when I'm doing any kind of touch-ups on paint or anything like that. So if you guys go back, you can see I have everything accessible, okay, within reach from my water supply, my wash station, I got two solo sprayers, and then back there, you know, I got some more brushes. I got my jaw horse back there. And then if you look here, this is my custom ringer. So when I'm doing my washes, and I'm detailing and the, and the towels get saturated. I just run it through real quick. One, two, three. And I wring out my towels and sometimes I hang dry them. So you can see it there. I just got locked into my, my bench drawer. This is another jaw horse, but this one is attached. You can see here to my professional work table. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of my cabinets and my toolboxes right now. And we're going to continue the rest of this video. This stuff is fun to show you guys. All right, guys, so now we're over at one of my main cabinets where I keep a lot of my products and stuff that I use on a regular basis. Now, just to let you guys know, I do get a lot of products from a lot of vendors to do testing. A lot of times, I'm going to tell you, 90% of the time, I don't do videos because either the product fails or I just don't think it's that amazing enough for me to go talk about it because then you guys are going to buy it, tell me it sucks, and then I'm going to feel bad doing the video on it. So another thing too, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. I do this all at my own will. I do have wholesale accounts for a lot of this stuff, um, you know, locally for like 3M and, and all of these products like that but I don't charge for videos and I'm not sponsored by any of these brands I'm gonna show you today. So everything here that I'm gonna show you is products that I, I may have done videos on, but this is the stuff that I use on a regular basis. Now, we're gonna, let's start over on the right-hand side of the cabinet. This is the Griot's Garage Ceramic 3-in-1 Wax. This is a really great product. This is a hybrid ceramic wax sprayable product. Now, the trick to this is you really gotta do your preparation, but this was the series of protection that we did on our Alfa Romeo Stelvio. And I did a full comprehensive video that not only did I test this, but I tested this over like a one year period doing several washes and doing upkeep and kind of see how it holds up. So this is a good product, a little finicky to apply. You gotta be real careful on the towels you use and you gotta have patience and you cannot use this stuff in the sun. This stuff will cause you a lot of headaches if you do. Now behind that, uh, I have Greer's Garage Leather 3-in-1 Spray. This was actually a freebie, I think, that I got when I placed an order for something a while ago for some polishers. Uh, this is actually a pretty good product. This is not great on older cars, like anything that's from like the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, because that leather is just done a little bit differently. This is good to give a quick wipe on any modern new car that has that plasticky finish. Uh, it's got a nice aroma. It doesn't leave too much of a greasy feel, but this is a pretty decent product. It's not my favorite product for leather. I'll show you some other products I have in my cabinet, but this, once in a while, if there's smudges, I will grab this in a, in a pinch, okay? Now, back here, we just have some more of the Grills Garage multi-surface -sur citrus cleaner. Back here, Car Pro Pearl. Uh, this was a good product. It still is a great product for tires and trim. This is an SiO2 based silicon oxide coat. You can see it paneled based on the chemistry. It costs paneling in a bottle. This stuff is pretty expensive. I don't use this anymore since we came out with Auto Fanatic Hole Shop, but being that I have three quarters of the bottle left, I still have it in my cabinet in case I decide to use it one day in a pinch or if I run out of product, I have something to go to that I know is gonna work outstanding. Now, next to here, we have some Malco Professional Compounds and Finishing Polishes. Uh, this stuff is pretty good. I've been using this for a while. Believe it or not, these two products remind me of the polishes that Adams used to sell. Adams, if you go back uh, 10, 15 years ago, they had three polishes. They had white, they had the orange, and then they had, I think it was a green. I know they had three pads, but they had three different polishes that they were used. And I always loved them, and then they kept switching it up and switching it up. But this stuff 
is very similar to those original Adams polishes. That's why they're in my cabinet, and that's why I do use them on occasion. You can see here. So we're going to put that to the side. Now, for metal polishing, which I do a lot of metal polishing, not just on cars, but other things as well, this stuff is the best. If you guys want the best metal polish that's not going to kill you with fumes, it's going to do the greatest job, this has submicron abrasives mixed in a petroleum distillate light oil base. A little bit goes a long way. You could put a couple of drops on this on a rotary polisher with a wool pad. And I'll show you guys a pad up here. You can see right there, you can use stainless steel, aluminum, and this stuff is incredible. So this is sold in a three pack. You really can't really find these in a lot of stores. So there's a link on Amazon. You buy it all three. There's light, medium, and coarse. And I highly, highly recommend you get some of this stuff. If you want to do your exhaust tips, you want to do an exhaust, headers, stainless steel, aluminum. This stuff is amazing. Now, moving right along, this stuff is fun because I have so much stuff and everybody's been asking me, hey, what do you got in your cabinet? So now this, you're going to see it. This is it here. So we have Colonite Insulator Wax 845 and we have Colonite number 325. Now, the only reason I have this was because I bought it just to compare it to Autofanatic Secret Weapon. And if you could see right here, the bottle's brand new. Secret Weapon, I think, blows it away. So that's why I don't really use this anymore. Maybe I'll do a, a giveaway on Instagram, or if anybody watches this video and is interested, contact me. Maybe I'll give it to you. But uh, it's a good product, but Auto Fanatic Secret Weapon just works better. Now, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Colonite waxes. 915 is my number one wax. Now, 845 is a great wax. The only thing about this wax is that it has like a liquid gel type, um, you know, consistency. And I just personally prefer a paste wax. I think it's more therapeutic. I enjoy it a little bit more of, you know, having the can and going like this. I mean, it's a great product. There's nothing wrong with it. I do use it on occasion. If I'm doing something quick, a quick repair or a quick touch up, and I don't want to get the can out, I will use the 845. This stuff is definitely really, really good. And uh, if you do your prep and you upkeep it, like I said, you, you know, with the colonite stuff, I usually upkeep it with Autofanatic 007. Okay. So with the 007 and, and with our soap, it's keeping the protective nature of this product to extend up to three times longer than you would get if you were using conventional, very harsh, high pH products. So back here, these products are made by Novus, okay? I use these products specifically to do plastic polishing on acrylic and lucite and polycarbonate. So this is great if you have a vintage car or a convertible with a plastic uh, back window, you wanna get some scratches out of that. Uh, I use this stuff on my high-end turntable cover in my home for my hi-fi system. Uh, any kind of plastics, this stuff is great to actually have. And this stuff is sometimes becomes a little bit harder to get. I buy this from one of my vendors locally who is a plastic manufacturing company. So that's where I buy it. But you can buy a three-pack, which is the whole set here, through Amazon as well. And every, like I said, I will put links to everything for you guys in this video. Now, we got some polishes here. This is the Rupes. Uh, ceramic gloss and this is the Zephner gloss the coarse and the fine I actually got samples of this stuff when I bought my Rupes hybrid nano it gives you a small bottle and I really like them so much that I bought the larger bottles of them so these products I do go to when I do any kind of wet sanding any heavy water spot removal uh, if I'm using the Rupes hybrid nano it really depends on what I'm doing and what I'm working on between hard paint soft paint single stage paint but these two polishes are really really great they did do some updates on these and i did get smaller bottles and they tried the newer stuff but i found that the performance of these works better than the newer stuff that's just my opinion as far as what i've tried and the multiple times that i put them to the test now we've got autofanatic secret weapon you guys know what this stuff is this stuff is incredible if you want go on the autofanatic channel or go on the website learn about this product you can watch the demonstration video as well so we have an original bottle. I usually just keep this for memories of the original 007 gloss enhancer. We're gonna put that to the side. Back here, got some Sonax Perfect Finish. Now, why is it in this bottle? Because the bottle was paneled and it collapsed. And I don't know why some manufacturers, they use these cheap plastic bottles, but like I said, sometimes you don't really know what you're getting. So you barely can read it, but I kind of know what this is. Uh, this is a really good, um, you know, mild, mildly aggressive polish. Uh, this works great on a lot of new cars. This works really well on BMW and Mercedes-Benz paints, and that's pretty much what I've ever used it for. Now, moving right along, we got Greer's Garage Fast Correcting Cream. Out of all of their Boss creams, you know, they got this one here, which is coated with the orange. They got this one here with the yellow. Uh, to be honest with you, I only use the Fast Correcting Cream. I buy it by the gallon. 
and then I refill the smaller bottles because they have these really nice spouts. You could just see here and you could prime your pads. It's super, super easy and it just makes it more efficient. Now, these two right here, they don't really give much correction on some hard clear coats like on something like the Ford Mustang and GT350. They just don't cut it. So I just had them in the cabinet just because they're there and I bought them as a set a while ago and I just leave them there. So I got another one, Fast Correcting Cream, a spare bottle back there. So this is a really good product. It cuts really well. There's no dust, very, very good yield. And this works great with a rotary or a dual action polisher as well. So this one here is an original version of an Auto Fanatic waterless wash that when we factored in what it cost to manufacture, the price went through the roof. So this one was canned and this will no longer be in the queue of having production. It just was too expensive because when I hired the lab to do products for me and I say, hey, listen, you know, cost being no object, sometimes I put my foot in the mouth when something like this costs me astronomical and the price is so high to manufacture, there's just no margins for me to make it and actually retail it. So over here, we have what you call the 3M Perfected Series Compounds. I just move the camera down. I'll show you guys a little bit better. Okay, so we got the polish, we got the ultra fine polish, and then we have the EX compounds, okay? Now, I've been, I love the EX compound because this is great if you're gonna do um, you know, color sanding on single stage or a very, very hard clear coat. The stuff finishes out well. It's expensive, look, it's 45 bucks, 52 bucks. This one's like another 58 bucks. But this is professional grade stuff. I use it with rotaries. And I don't use any of this stuff, any of this 3M stuff, I don't really use it with um, a dual action. I'll use it with a Flex 3401 and I'll use it with my professional rotary equipment. That's all I use this stuff for. And this is really done specifically for pretty aggressive repairs because if I'm doing aggressive stuff or I have a serious repair I gotta do, this is the first set of stuff that I'm gonna come to, that I'm gonna gravitate to, to start using. I'm not gonna go and grab the Rupaz. I'm not gonna go and grab the fast correcting cream because you know, based on experience, I'm gonna know exactly what I'm gonna need to do to correct. And everything that I have in the cabinet is specific based on certain types of jobs that I'll be working on, whether it's on my own cars or whether it's on customers' cars. So let's get the camera up on top. We'll show you the, uh, the remainder of the cabinet. All right, guys, now we're on the second tier of my comprehensive wall cabinet. So what are you gonna see here? We have the Meguiar's Professional Detailing Clay. We have aggressive and we have mild. I did a video on clay about three years ago, and I'm gonna tell you right now, if you guys don't wanna use that generic crap from the stores and you want the very best clay, these are the two that you're going to want to have in your cabinet. I can't even tell you. These things are amazing. Uh, as far as decontamination, you want to do stuff on wheels. This stuff is the best. Okay, we're going to put that to the side. Now, over here, we have waxes. Now, if you guys watched the video when I waxed the Ferrari 355, which has a single stage paint, I said I wanted to do something a little bit different and unique. So I decided to invest the money into, in the Zymol Ital. This is specifically made for the PPG single stage paints. And the way this stuff works is that you stick your fingers in there and you warm up the wax and you use your fingers to glide it across the paint. It was a really cool video. If you guys wanna watch it, it's about 45 minutes long. It was a really awesome experience. I already used this thing about two times. And I gotta tell you, it, it was just a really, really awesome experience. And I highly recommend anybody that wants to try something unique to, uh, to check that out. Over here, we have Masterson's Legend Paste Wax. Greg is a cool dude. If you follow him online, he is an absolute character and he makes me laugh. But uh, you can see here, I got a Meguiar's pad in there. This is a really good wax if you want to just go over the car quick. This doesn't, um, you don't fight the wax to get it off. It's very easy to get it off the car. It doesn't leave a residue and it gives you a nice little pop. This is not a long lasting wax. This is a show type of wax, okay? Just to let you guys know. So that's in my arsenal. Now, number one favorite, Colonite 915. Been using this stuff since I'm a teenager. This stuff is incredible. Still my go-to wax. I still prefer the application process of this versus this. That's just personal preference. That's just what I enjoy a little bit better. But everybody's got their own preference. Some people like liquid waxes, some people like paste waxes. But I just wanna show you guys, this is the stuff that I'm using all the time. I go through probably a can of this, maybe every year, maybe every two years I'll buy a can. But I have so much stuff that it takes a while to, uh, to go through it. Colonite 476, super double coat. What do I use this for? This is a synthetic Carnuba based wax. I specifically use this on alloy wheels to do winter prep or on the paint of the cars for daily driven cars that stay outside to do winter prep. This doesn't give you the glow and the pop that 915 is gonna give you, but it's still a really good wax. It's affordable. 
easy on, easy off, and it does give you pretty good protection against road salt. So that's what I recommend for you guys in the winter in the snow belt. Now, Soft 99 Fuso Coat. This is the original Soft 99 Fuso Coat. This is not the updated version that they did, I think, about like one or two years ago. This stuff is the most durable Teflon-infused PTFE, they call it, wax. Now, the reason I still have it is because, number one, you can't buy this version anymore. This stuff is super durable. This is also another awesome product if you want to do your wheels. Now, the only caveat to this is PTFE is very toxic. You don't really want to inhale it. You don't want to get it on your skin. So it's one of those products that I don't go to all the time because of that. You know, sometimes I don't like to wear gloves uh, and I don't like to smell it as stuff. But if there's something that I'm doing like for winter uh, and I want to give a little bit more durability than, than this, the Soft 99 Fusa Coat is definitely the one to have if you can still find some. You might be able to get some of that stuff on eBay. Uh, Grillo's Garage, Premium Carnuba Paste Wax. I had this for a couple of years. And I did a video on it, one of my very first videos of waxes. Uh, this is a pretty good wax. I compare this wax very similar to the Legend Paste Wax as far as application, durability, glow, and everything that you're pretty much going to get out of it. I don't really go to this. I mean, it's just in my cabinet, uh, almost like a backup wax, you know, if I want to do something quick. Because Soft 99 Fusa Coat is a royal pain in the ass to apply and get off. It just, that's just the nature of it. This stuff is super easy to use. And uh, the Colonite, the 915, the real trick to this, it's not really a trick, is I show you guys in my video, you got to have the right towel. So I use the Griot's Garage Dual Weave Wax PFM Towel. I'm going to grab one right now for you, just to show you, because it's right behind me. So these are the towels that I use, and in between panels, you flip it, and then I spray a little bit of 007 Gloss Enhancer just to get any residue and haze off. You come back when the car is done, this thing looks absolutely mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. So we're going to put that back. We're going to get the clays back up here. We're just going to put stuff back and rearrange this stuff while I shoot this video in real time. There's not going to be much editing to this video. Okay, so now over here we have a lint roller. I use this for carpeting and getting stuff added to carpets. Uh, back here... I got some clays that manufacturers like work stuff sent me. Um, I tried it. Doesn't really impress me enough because this stuff is just so much better and this is just easier for me to obtain. We got some other Auto Fanatic products that I'm working on. Those are some sample bottles. We're not going to talk about that today. Ah, uh, this is a really interesting product. Really, really cheap. It's called Money's Worth and Best Leather Lotion. Now, the reason this stuff is great is because not only is it a conditioner, it also does a really good job cleaning. This bottle, I don't know, maybe it's seven bucks, maybe it's 10 bucks, but for what it is, you shake it up, you put it on a microfiber towel. Um, it's not gonna remove the color, so you're not gonna get color transfer onto your towel with this. It's super safe. I use it on shoes, boots, leather jackets, cars. It's just a, a very simple go-to solution where you don't wanna go crazy using any of the other stuff that I have in my cabinet. So that's a cheap one, and that's definitely, I recommend you pick some of that stuff up. now. What's this right here? This is Connolly Hide Care. This is basically a solvent-based liquid. You can see that right there. This is really only used on vintage cars. Rolls-Royce, old Ferraris, old Porsches, old Mercedes-Benz, anything that had that real heavy-duty, tough Connolly leather, this is what you're going to want to use just because a lot of this water-based stuff, the newer stuff, is not going to really penetrate and get into the pores of the older leather. This has a solvent-based that actually opens up the pores and the product gets in there. This stuff is expensive, but it works really, really well. We've got some other stuff here. Uh, this is made by a company called Lithium Car Care, Lithium Leather Love. This is like um, almost like a saddle soap. That's pretty much what, what I would call it. You can see it right there. This is decent. I have it in there because they sent me a sample a while ago, and I use it a couple of times, but I just leave it in there for one of those occasions where maybe i want something really mild and generic and i don't want to use uh, i don't have a saddle soap around i use, usually keep saddle soap and i'm i'm all out of stock of it something like this this was an awesome awesome experience and i tell you right now if anybody out there has ever tried it or has wanted to try to wax a car with their bare hands i tell you man i, I think you should go ahead and do it once in your life i think you might really really enjoy it mother's mag and aluminum polish now i showed you we use the clip tone now what's good about this stuff see this is liquid you can hear that? Okay, that's, that's liquid. This is a paste, like a thick paste. You can see it. I use it a lot. So what's cool about this stuff, I could just dip my wool polishing pads or my collets in there, and I could polish up stainless steel screws. I could do aluminum edges. I could do a lot of stuff with this. Uh, it goes a long way. It does have a solvent-based smell to it. Anything with metal is going to have a solvent-based smell to it, FYI. But uh, 
This is tried and true. You just have to use the right pads and the right application method. This will give you show winning results on metal as well. It's just a little bit of a different process versus using the liquids from Gliptone that I love as well. So we're gonna go up to the top, top shelf. Let's go up here. There we go. So we got some miscellaneous stuff up here. I got a coating from Migliori. They sent me this a while ago. Um, what ended up happening, I bought one of your wheel coatings. It exploded in my face, made a mess, and I couldn't get a replacement. So they sent me this as a free gift, and I haven't used it yet. So it's still here. They also sent me, I guess this is their topper, the Migliori Sima sealant. I haven't used it, but if anybody has used any of this stuff from Migliori, the guy's up in Connecticut. Uh, he follows me on Instagram, and I think we chatted a few times in the last couple of years, but seems like he's got a cool brand and he's doing some cool stuff. It's very boutique, and uh, he's local, so I have it in my cabinet. So one day, I will probably do this coating with this topper, and I'll let you know how I think of it. C-Quartz UK 3.0. This is just, uh, like I said, another the product that I did a sample test on. I use this on the Shelby GT350R. I did not have good results with it. That's why I didn't really go into a full detailed video. I still have it in here in case... You know, I need to do some touch-ups and updates, but then I'm going to start working on the 350R. I got to do some stripe replacement. I'm going to probably, you know, polish the car. I'll probably do another coating. Uh, I think I'm going to try something different, and I think I may do something from Kabakazi. We'll see. And this, they both smell identical. Uh, be careful with the stuff. Don't use too much. Don't spray it on plastics. Just give your floor mats a quick mist, and then I usually leave the windows open for about 10 to 20 minutes just because you don't want to overpower it when you get in. Do not spray this inside your air vents. You are going to get a funky smell if you do that over time. Here we go, G-Technique C5 wheel armor. I don't know, I've tried this a bunch of times. I did not get favorable results. I actually got much better results with the Kamikaze and the Gion rim, okay? So I'm just letting you guys know. I know Matt of Obsessed Garage sells this stuff. He likes it. I don't know, I just did not have good results on satin finishes and matte finishes with this product. I actually tried this on two wheels on the Shelby GT350R. It does absolutely nothing for the brake dust repellency. Uh, that's just my personal feedback as far as what I've done with it. Kamikaze Stance Rim Coat. This is a really good product. Now, lesson learned, because I've you know, used this several times already. The trick is, you gotta read the instructions. It says you wanna leave it on the rim for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? This is the misconception with a lot of ceramic coatings. They tell you to put it on, and as soon as you're done with your panel, to wipe it off, okay? That's usually the norm with a lot of these coatings, and maybe that's where, maybe this one didn't really give me good results, but with the Gion rim, I get good results with that over and over. It's very consistent, and customers, you know, everybody that watches the channel, they, they love that stuff. This product is phenomenal, okay? But you gotta leave it on there. You have to have good ambient temperature. Don't do it in the sun. Don't do it on a rainy day. Take your time and also do two coats. So wait 10 to 15 minutes and then wipe it. This does not give the stickiness that you're gonna get with a conventional ceramic coating. It's different chemistry that they're using. Uh, this is a real boutique brand from, from Japan and I really, really like this. And this is definitely, I wanna buy their ultra high-end version of ceramic coating and I, I wanna do it on the Shelby GT350R. And if I do, I'm gonna do a video on it because I know it's gonna absolutely kick ass. But this stuff is really, really good. Uh, Car Pro Reload. This is just a sample bottle that they give you when you buy the uh, C Quartz UK. The thing about C Quartz UK, it does work. Uh, you know, I've used it on a, a couple of customers' cars in the past two years. It does work. The upkeep could be a little tricky. So if you leave your car outdoors, I don't suggest C Quartz UK 3.0. I think there's probably going to be better coatings out there because what ends up happening. It water spots easily, and you also lose the hydrophobic properties and that really slick, smooth feeling on the paint uh, if you leave the car outdoors. If the car is garaged, this is a phenomenal product. But if it's not garaged, I don't recommend using it. A uh, little bottle of Gugon. Everybody needs this. You want to take off decals. You want to debadge a car. Just definitely safe to use uh, if you don't want to use any of the solvents like the uh, Prepsol that I have on the other side of the garage. But this is definitely worth having. Buy a small bottle at Home Depot or Lowe's, and I keep it in the cabinet. So... This is the cabinet, top to finish. I also have some leather cleaners and conditioners over here. And in the back, I got some more polishing pads, three inch and four inch, you know, just all extras and some other stuff like that. So let's get over to the other cabinet. We'll talk some more about what else I got at my arsenal. All right, guys, so now we're on the cabinet over on the right-hand side of the one we just originally got to. So you're gonna see in this cabinet, I did a video about two years ago showing all my microfiber towels and all my organization. So I keep a lot of spares in here and I keep a lot of other, you know, things that I use for detailing. So we're gonna start at the bottom shelf. 
I just have a brand new batch of 3M N95 masks. I use this also when I'm doing polishing and detailing. So these are definitely worth having, uh, especially when you're using ceramic coatings and stuff like that. So over here, I just have some inventory of the Greer's Garage PFM Terry Weave Towels. Now, this is the same type of towel as their PFM drying towel, just a much smaller size, 16 by 16. So this towel is great to dry the car. I usually blow dry the car um, and I have very little water on the car because the cars are protected. And I'll do some touch-ups in the jams, also use this for wheels. So I have inventory of these and I keep the inventory over here. Over here we have some of those clay mitts. Uh, these are pretty interesting. I did a video on this on the Alfa Romeo using 007 Snowstorm. The stuff works well. Instead of using conventional clay, you stick your hand in here, you lubricate the car, and you can kind of give the car a good once over to do a quick decam contamination. I got some stuff from Malco. I got different grades of it. And these are just here for inventory. And that's that. Uh, I got a bunch of Greer's Garage surface prep towels. Now, this is similar to the mitt, except let me just pull this out so I'll show you guys. It's a towel. Now, I bought a bunch of these just to try them out. They do work well, except this finish, you can see my finger in there. It's very soft and it does mar the paint and it makes a mess. So these are in my cabinet. I don't know, maybe I'll give them away. Maybe I'll post them in the Autofanatic web shop for sale really cheap. But I made the mistake of buying a bunch of these a while ago. And after I used them a couple of times, I just don't like that they leave a residue. So I got, I don't know, I got about a dozen of them in here. So if anybody is interested in one of these, Hit me up, contact me on IG, I will uh, maybe give you one. So we got some extra polishing pads here. I got some extra polishing pads there. You see, I got everything labeled. These are OptiPad medium cuts. Now we're gonna get the camera closer. I'll show you guys a little bit more on the second shelf. Okay, so we got some smaller Greer's Garage two inch pads. These are great, okay? These are the yellow pads. I got the orange pads and I got the microfiber pads. These are great on their new GR3 machine. And I use this stuff a lot. So I have a separate toolbox. I'm going to show you guys in a minute uh, all my pads and everything I got in there. So we're just going to take these and we're going to put these to the side. Okay, that just fell. So I got an extra backing plate for one of my professional rotary polishers. Put that in there. Now you can see here I got all these plastic bins I bought at the container store. And they're great because it keeps your microfibers safe. These are, you know, for inventory. Jam's drying. So these are the Greer's Garage microfiber detailing towels the light blue and everything is color coded and i used uh my brother p touch label maker and these are also great because when your hands are dirty or covered in chemicals the label doesn't come off and it doesn't change uh you know the writing on it which is really really good so i keep these in these bins just like that over here you can see labeled soft 99 fuso coat so this is pretty much what i'll use for fuso coat those are the wax pads we have ceramic applicators Okay, these I just buy in bulk on Amazon. These are for ceramic coatings. I personally don't love using those square sponges, but I have them anyway. This is here for the Ruprez Ibra Nano Polisher. These are just some extra polishing pads that I have in stock. This is for the polisher. It's called Fordham. Uh, this is actually a professional polisher that goes onto a mandrel, and it's like a wand, and you can kind of do really, really highly detailed stuff. So I use my collets, and I put stuff on there. And I actually did a video using that on the channel probably about two years ago as well. So everything is organized, everything's labeled, everything is as neat as I could possibly get it considering the space that I have. I wish cabinets for the garage were deeper. These are only like, I don't know, like 18 inches deep. I wish they were 30 inches deep, uh, but that's gonna be one day when I do a custom build on a garage and that'll be coming soon. So Auto Fanatic Secret Weapon. I use white microfiber wax pads because I like to see the transfer come off. And if you guys watched the video I did recently on the Mercedes S580 detail, that's what I used. Now over here, we got some little mitts. You put your fingers in here, and this is good if you wanna use it either to do a coating or to clean your wheels and in intricate details of the car. So I leave these in here. I use them for wheels and calipers. The only thing is about when I'm doing wheels and calipers, I don't like to get my hands wet. Uh, and I don't usually always wear gloves. So that's just my personal issue on how I do things. Colonite 476, super double coat. I use a different style microfiber applicator which has a little bit of a tighter nap now colonite 915 i usually use the yellow mcguire's pads but i had a hard time getting them locally so i found these and i actually love these these actually last a little bit longer so i keep these in a separate bin i you, you tell so i use microfiber on 
the other types of waxes and on 915 something that's really really going to give that final finish i use a foam applicator i just find it that when you load up the foam applicator it just works better and on single stage paints it's less aggressive to cause any you know introduce scratches as you're doing your pattern i have some microfiber Autofanatic microfiber wash mops uh, extras over here. I got another batch of PFMs. These are brand new. These are just backup for stock. We go up top. Let's go up to the top cabinet. So up here we have another Greer's Garage Billion Finish Foam Cannon just for inventory. I bought these things, uh, Detail Guards. You know what? I used them one time. And every time I wash my car, I just never think of going to use them. So I don't know. Some of you guys probably like these or use them. I don't know. I bought them because I was ordering something from one of those detailer supplies online and I just saw it. And I'm like, I'll ah, just throw it in the cart and I got free shipping. But I'll be honest with you, I keep forgetting to use them. So these things just sit in the cabinet and that's what it is. So over here, we got some Cerakote trim coat and headlight restoration kits. I don't have old cars, but I have used this stuff in the past and I have it for inventory in case I get a customer's car or an older project that I'm going to work on and I want to restore the rubber trim or plastic trim. I have it in stock that I could go and I don't have to reorder it. Over here, we got some more, just some spare microfiber wax pads. Now, interior trim. Now, if you look here, I have light blue and I have white microfiber towels. These are about a 400 GSM. The reason I specifically label them for interior trim, uh, when you're working on a lot of cars, older cars, you gotta be careful, um, like you don't wanna use a black or a dark gray microfiber towel if you're cleaning leather in certain panels because a lot of times on older cars, a lot of, a lot of spots can be re-dyed. Even on a newer car can be re-dyed. So if you're using a product that may not be safe or you're doing a little sample spot, I like the lighter towels and the thinner nap because if there's gonna be any color transfer, you're gonna notice it quickly on these and then you're gonna stop and switch your application and use a different product altogether. Now, same thing here we got for wheels. These are just some cheap microfiber towels. I buy the 50 pack bundle off Amazon. And this is just like to touch up around the valve stem, inside the spokes, inside the barrel. Like sometimes I'll take the, the cheap towel like that. I'll put my hand on it. I'll spray some 007 and I'll go all the way inside the barrel and clean like this to make sure any drips from the brake rotor or any residue when I roll the car back and forth in the driveway comes off. And then I don't usually clean these they're so cheap. I usually just leave them in the garage and I designate them for certain duties of what I call dirty tasks. Then after a while, I just chuck them. I buy 50 in a bundle. They're like 25 bucks for 50. And that's just what I do. So this takes care of this cabinet here. Now we're going to move over to my listed toolbox. All right, guys. So we're over at one of my list of custom boxes that I just got recently. And this one is dedicated to mostly auto detailing. So we're going to start here. This is the first top drawer. Now, I, the way I designed my drawers on this cabinet, I have the larger stuff on the top and the smaller drawers on the bottom. So this one here is my most ex easily accessible microfiber towels, stuff that I use regularly. Everything in here is stuff that I use regularly. The cabinet on the wall, those are all backups and spares for inventory. So we're going to go over here. So what do we got? These are the 16 by 16 Greer's Garage Terry Weave. This like I call this the miniature PFM drying towel. I use these a lot for jams and for drying the car because the, the larger towel here sometimes because my cars are loaded to ground sometimes when i go and i twist the towel can hit the the pavement and i i stopped using those i only use those on the suvs and anything large that i'm working on so over here this is the Greer's garage dual weave wax removal towel these things are the absolute best uh soft 99 fuso coat if you're going to use anything with solvent like soft 99 fuso coat you're going to want to chuck these you don't want to wash these because the solvent's going to get all over your washing machine but these are great for colonite 915 and any of the colonite products or any of the waxes out there. Stuff is incredible. Uh, reduces the chances of hazing and you know any of those marrings that you're gonna get, especially on a dark colored car. We have here, this is a drying towel. This one is sold from Chemical Guys. This is actually really, really good. Uh, these are affordable, they're easy to use, and they work great when I go over to the other side of the garage and I have to wring them out. This is a great towel to have and I use a lot of these. So these are also Greer's Garage Edgeless PFM detailing towels. This is great for 007 gloss enhancer or any kind of the SiO2 toppers on a ceramic coating. These are great. They don't have the edges. You can see here, this has like the silk edges that are sewn in. So this could be a little bit safer if you're working on super soft paint and really delicate paint. So I have a lot of these. You can see here, I have a, two rows of them here. Now these are 
like about another 400 GSM, maybe a little bit greater. This is like a generic microfiber towel, but this towel I use to remove ceramic coatings and wheel coatings. This is a great towel, very similar to the Gion Bald Wipe, okay, as far as the performance, except these are a hell of a lot cheaper. And I found those on a whim because they contacted me, and now I buy those directly on Amazon. This here, this is another Griot's Garage. This is a very soft microfiber towel, very long strand. This is good to do the final pass when you're using um, the, the Griot's Garage Ceramic 3-in-1 Wax or any kind of coatings or you want to give the car a quick once over and you want to make sure it's like really, really good right before you go to a show or at the show field. This is super delicate, great on high gloss finishes, whether it's the wheels or the paint on your car. Over here, we got the Griot's Garage interior towels. This is similar to like a dual weave. You kind of have a pattern on the back, very similar to like, you know, most of the generic glass cleaning towels. And then over here, you have a different nap as well. So this is good if you're gonna use like any of the leather stuff, any like those liquid leather cleaners or a very, very heavily diluted APC. Spray a little on here, you wipe down your vinyl and plastic surfaces, stuff works great. And I like the fact that everything is color coded. We have some microfiber, wash mitts here we have a microfiber wash towel this is actually a new product i started using uh these are pretty cool so it's broken down into four quadrants super super soft it's actually similar to the gsm of this towel except it feels a little bit bulkier and a little stronger the way it's manufactured so instead of using something with the microfiber tendrils if you want something a little softer you want to work on something with single stage paint definitely check out these from Greer's garage as well i actually really like those a lot Right here, we have another drying towel from Chemical Guys, very similar to the orange one, except this has a little bit more tooth, okay? Similar size, this has a little bit more tooth, very, very lightweight. That's great to uh, dry off SUVs or any kind of a large vehicle. We have some microfiber towels for glass cleaning. This is another heavier shag towel. Believe it or not, I only use this when I'm working on cars. Before I put the fender apron protector down on the car, I put this down because it's so freaking soft. Before I had this towel, I was using the Chemical Guys Woolly, uh, Woolly Mammoth towel because the towel gets so damn heavy when it gets wet, I just stopped using it. But when I'm working on cars and I want to protect the finish, I lay this towel down or I have other ones on the other side of the garage and then I put my vinyl fender protector down with the foam and it keeps the car safe as I'm wrenching on the cars. So over here, we have these towels. These I've been using for a really long time. These are from Chemical Guys. They have dual weave pattern, you know, like I said, different GSM on this side, and they have a little bit of a shaggier GSM on that side. Now, these are really good for wax removal. They're not as good as the Grizz Garage dual weave, but these also are a little bit larger. So what do I use these towels for? I use these towels to do some interior cleaning uh, when I'm scrubbing carpets, and also when I'm doing wheel detailing, specifically wheels, because they're cheap. And when I trash them, when I'm doing calipers, wheels, or undercarriage uh, detailing, I throw them in the trash. I don't waste my time washing them. Over here, we have Griot's Garage PFM drying towels. I got a whole stack of them. And like I said, I only use these when I'm doing the Stelvio, a pickup truck, or any kind of a large vehicle. So everything here, this is what I use on a regular basis, okay? So let's go over here. I'm gonna show you guys, this is the cool stuff. Now, this drawer has all of my frequently used pain correction tools. What do we have here? So we're gonna start over on the left-hand side. We have the complete Rupes Hybrid Nano Long Neck Kit. Okay, behind it, I have attachments and I also have one of those uh, Fordham wands sitting right here with a bunch of other attachments. Everything's nestled in there. With the list of cabinets, I divided it as such because I want everything organized. Over here, we have the Griot's Garage. This is the, G, this is the G8 Mini Dual Action Orbit, uh, Polisher. This thing is awesome. One of my favorite tools, one of the most frequently used tools in this garage. I love this tool. We have a spare cord because, you know, the Greer's Garage, they have the proprietary removable cord where you just go back here and you pop the cord out. Super awesome. And I like the way you'll see because my other tools have the cords wrapped around them. But this is a really, really clever design. I also got the new rotary polisher from Greer's Garage. It's the GR3. Yes, the GR3 mini polisher. This is awesome to do polishing of stainless steel, hard metals, plastics, whatever. This is an awesome, awesome tool. Also for headlight restoration, don't use a drill. Pick up a tool like this. It's super affordable and you get the lifetime warranty. That's why I like a lot of these tools It's because warranty. I drop stuff, we all drop stuff and that's just the nature of the beast. I got some extensions over here, some extra collets. I got a bunch of different backing plates for various different machines from the Makita to the Griots to the, this is actually for my Flex XFE 
uh, cordless, which I have in the other cabinet on the side of me. I have a lot of equipment, guys, and that's why you guys have been asking me for years. You want to see some of my stuff. So here's an opportunity to kind of get a good firsthand glimpse of what I use and why I use it on a regular basis because you guys want to know how I keep my cars looking so awesome. So these polishers here, these are the Griot's Garage Boss G15 and G21s. These are the original versions. I believe these were made by Max Shine, but I actually had the Max Shine polishers and I did some videos on those. These feel a little bit better uh, ergonomically and a little bit better built. I tested out their newer versions and I didn't love them and I'm kind of glad that I stuck with the original versions. They just, for me, they work better. I like using them. I like the ergonomic better, so they stay. This is a really cool tool. This is the Makita. This is a dual action and a force rotation machine, except it rotates in the opposite direction of the Flex 3401. This is a really cool machine, awesome machine to get. And I have the five inch and I have the six inch. Where is it? Right here, backing plate. This is really, really hard to find. They don't sell this in the United States. I actually got this from the Makita distributor in Australia. He sent, saw my video and he's like, hey, I'll send it to you as a, as a favor. So I was like, yeah, man, it's awesome. So I use this as well. That's definitely a much more refined tool than a Flex 3401. This is my little rotary from Flex. This is the PE8. This thing is a monster powerhouse. This is great when you're polishing out billet aluminum wheels. You've got it like a big hot rod you're working on or like a big panel and you just want to try to kill the machine, you could kill the machine. This machine doesn't get killed. It's, it's not very ergonomically friendly with the on and off switch. It doesn't have anything fancy about it. It's really just a glorified 90 degree grinder that's adapted for polishing and paint correction. But I use this a lot on solid surface. I do not use this on paint. Okay, just to let you guys know. We got here, this is my 3401. This is really, really old. I can't even tell you how many cars I've worked on with this thing, but this thing is old and beat up and it still kicks. Uh, I did a couple of maintenance things where I opened it up, I re-greased it, and I had to send it back once uh, for repair many, many years ago, but this, this tool is awesome. It's a little aggressive to use, not the most user-friendly as far as the ergonomic. It looks pretty much like an antiquated dinosaur by today's standards, but like I said, I have it in there because you can't kill the machine. Now, I have the Makita, I have Black & Decker, and I have DeWalt Professional Rotaries on the other side of the garage. I'm not going to show you those because I don't, I don't use a lot of that stuff anymore to do any auto detailing. If I'm going to do a rotary, this is the rotary that I'm using, the Flex PE14. This thing is super quiet, soft trigger start, smooth, lightweight, absolutely awesome machine, and very, very easy to use. So if anybody's out there is looking for a, a rotary, that is afraid to burn the paint because those other machines I got in the garage, they're heavy and super powerful. You could burn the paint in a matter of seconds. This machine is super safe and I highly recommend anybody that wants to get into rotary polishing, this would be the tool to, uh, to get. So I'm gonna put that aside. Now, of course, you see all these polishers in this bin. Now you're probably gonna wonder, what, what are you doing for polishing pads? Everybody asked me about polishing pads. So let's open up the next drawer and we're gonna show you my polishing pads okay so we have a nice array of polishing pads from Rupes, Griots, Meguiar's, OptiPad, 3M pretty much everything you could see here so everything is organized I, I put the dividers the way I did uh, specifically I mean you could go crazy with these dividers I don't want to go too crazy because I need access to this stuff when I'm working on a project I want to have the drawer open and I want to grab pads as I'm doing my project and I have a lot of pads because when I'm working on a project, I'm not going to sit there cleaning and blowing out pads. I'm just going to use all the pads that I have, and then at the end of the day, I'm going to clean them. Or when I'm doing a job for a customer and I'm getting paid to do these jobs, I factor in the consumables into the price of the job. I don't know if any of you guys that do mobile detailing or, or whatever, that's what I do. When somebody's hiring me to do a job, like I'm, I got called recently to go do another Ferrari, and I'm supposed to go look at the car next week, and I actually may shoot a video if the guy allows me. Uh, going through and showing a paint assessment and then I'm going to give them a quote as far as how much work it's going to be to make that car perfect. So from left to right, I got everything from one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, six inch, uh, you know, up to these guys here. These are the 3M uh, that have the quick release. So you could basically polish on one side, pop it out and flip it and you have a fresh pad on the other side. These things are awesome. And I use these specifically with the 3M perfected series polishes and compounds. So these are worth having. These are the heavy wool pads. I use these for polishing stainless steel exhaust systems, uh, aluminum, anything that's big, I'm gonna go use my professional 
rotary machines. I'm not going to use the Flex. I'm going to use the DeWalt, the Makita, or the Black & Decker because those have the weight and the torque, and it's going to be enough to cut down on solid surface materials you can see here. So these are 3M pads as well. We got OptiPads. We got this is a Rupes pad, so I use this with the Boss G15 and G21s. It really depends what I'm working on. Uh, these pads here, these are from CarPro. This is used for that new Essence Plus that I did a video on, uh, the GT350, not that long ago. These are super soft pads. So everything in here is set up for a specific purpose, including double-sided 3M wool pads. So you can't really see it, but this, you see that right there? It's got that little hex collet, so I could flip it and go back in reverse. This is great when you're polishing out an exhaust. You don't want to stop and, you know, go look for another pad. You just pop the collet out. And that's pretty much what you got. So I've got a series of different microfiber pads, all different densities here. And every job is going to require a different style pad. So look, we got really thin ones with no backing plate, no interference pad. We got ones with a nice thick foam interference pad. Because like I said, the different, de the different thicknesses and densities of the pad are going to generate how much downward pressure and heat is going to be generated to your panel. So everything is done specifically for density and heat control. Because if you use the wrong stuff, you could burn paint real easily. So we got some more from OptiPads. These are excellent, excellent microfiber pads. And uh, I believe these are Meguiar's. We got OptiPads, we got Griot's. And Griot's Garage came out with these recently. These are their, um, their new knitted wool pads. These are absolutely incredible on stainless steel. There's gonna be an upcoming Auto Fanatic video where I'm gonna show you guys how to polish up a stainless steel exhaust from start to finish. You guys are gonna really, really love that. Whether you wanna do it for your own personal OCD or you're trying to sell an aftermarket exhaust online, you wanna make it look right, stay tuned for that video because it's coming soon. But these pads are absolutely incredible and I use these a lot and I have more on another cabinet behind me when I run out of stock. So I stock up on everything. I spend thousands of dollars a year on having inventory of everything because I just wanna make sure that when I'm working on customers' cars and even my own projects, I don't ever have to stop the job in between and wait to order stuff and get stuff in in a couple of days. But this is my frequently used polishing pads. Now in the cabinet over on the right hand side, I have uh, more bins from the container store that are filled with extras. I have extras of all inventory. So I have plenty of pads to last me quite a while and multiple jobs. And then when I'm working on a customer's car and I trash pads and the pads go in the garbage, I go into my reserves and I, re I replenish the drawer. That's what I do. So I go into my reserves on the other side of the garage, I replenish the drawer, and then the cycle continues. I get another job, customer pays me, I factor in the cost of the pads and the consumables, including towels, and then I buy more and more and more. So we're gonna go down to another drawer. Now this is just a supplemental drawer, nothing really crazy. Just some spare stuff that I got laying around and I keep them. So I got some detailing brushes, uh, I did a video on this and I accidentally deleted the video, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do another video on this. Uh, nice little wash mitt here. I never used this one. Got some paperwork from the IK foamers. Uh, I got an extra gauge for my pressure washer. I got parts for my steam clean machine. Uh, this is used to clean glass. These things are okay, but uh, sometimes it's better just to use your hand. I got parts for my Auto Fanatic foamers. I got the swivel attachment for the pressure washer lance right here. Got more natural hair detailing brushes. I got more SG28 guns for backup. I got pumpers for the IK foamers. Greer's Garage Garden Hose with the attachment, which I'm no longer using anymore. Uh, I got this also for pet hair. I don't know where I got this from, but this works pretty good. It's a silicone brush. I don't really work on a lot of cars with pets, but sometimes I do and uh, I need it. Got some extra wheel woolly brushes here. These things are just there for inventory and for modification purposes. These are the rotary brushes to clean floor mats and carpets, but you gotta be careful with this because you could actually cause a lot of damage with these. These are pretty dense. This is a Sonax leather brush, so you're gonna wanna massage some of that leather cleaner into this brush and then gently agitate to get inside all the grain. So this is what I use that for. I have a spare tire scrubbing brush just sitting here. I got more of this. This is my auto detailing stand. So I have another one. Um, I forgot the name of the guy that makes them, but he sent me a really cool stand that's got a, a, a pivot on the back as well. Uh, but for the most part, when I'm ever doing like wheel cleaning or winter prep, this is just easier to just grab this out of the drawer, go and do it. I don't have to set it up and it just works really, really well. And this is one of my wheel detailing stands. So 
that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching this video. The video is going to be long. It's going to be comprehensive, but you guys asked for it. You wanted to see some of my equipment. You wanted to look inside some of my drawers. Um, and I showed you guys a pretty comprehensive look into a lot of the stuff that I use on a regular basis, maintaining my cars and working on cars and detailing cars. And like I said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If anybody has questions on any of this stuff, you can always contact me direct, post it in the comments section below. Uh, I'm going to tidy up my drawers right now because I pulled everything out. And uh, the links for a lot of the stuff will be posted in the video description below. You can order stuff, Camo Guys, Amazon, Griot's Garage, uh, Sky's the Limit Car Care, Auto Geek. I mean, depending on who you want to buy from, you can buy the stuff from a lot of different sources as well. And any of the stuff that I sell, you can order, of course, directly through the Auto Fanatic web shop. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys on a new video soon. Thanks, guys.